Minister for Education. Well, I'm just like, I'm Fiona Gary, and like Aileen said, I'm just to say thank you for everyone for joining us today. Um, we are going to record today's session, so if you want to put yourself in uh, mute so that we can hear all the presentations, if you want to hide your camera, because I will be doing some tweets, as well as our social media people using the hashtag capital SEQF small letter counts. That's the hashtag that Donnie put in the chat for us. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to pass you on to Jim Metcalf, the chair of CDN, who's going to be our chair for today. Thanks, Jim. Over to you. Thanks, Fiona. And hello, everyone. Um, Fiona's promoted me. I'm not the chair of CDN. I'm just its chief executive. I, I can only dream of such uh, a hallowed position. But it is a it's a delight to be with you. So I, I'm a member of the SCQF Partnership Board. I'm very pleased and proud to be so and delighted to be chairing this event um for for the second year so last year we had a cracking session here uh, and this is going to be even better because there's even more people there's, there's an enormous cast of people which i think is testament to the work of the ambassador program but also to the importance of school college partnerships around the country so the one of the things i'm going to have to ask you i'm afraid is if you want if you want to ask a question in this session or get involved you can't use the chat you're going to have to actually speak i just cannot handle this in, enormous audience and the chat function at once. So if you want to get involved here, I'm afraid you're going to have to speak. Use that voice and project. So I'm going to need to have a digital hand raised. If you're not used to this, uh, to Teams, you're in reactions, raise your hand uh, and I will come to you and ask you to, to, to speak or present your point uh, during the session. So, so we've got um, three, well, we've got two main projects we're going to hear more about and then we're going to have a, uh, a, a an input from Ollie Bray, who's uh, one of the great friends to school college partnership work from Education Scotland and has been for years. We'll hear from Ollie, then we'll come back uh, to Donnie and Fiona at the end. So we'll, we'll come uh, to those projects in a second, but I was just reflecting on uh, on the minister's contribution, which as ever was lucid and, and categorical and really interesting. But he referred to the college sector's role and these partnerships as anchor institutions, anchoring something. And I know what he means, and we use that terminology. I work in the college sector. We use that terminology a lot about ourselves, that we're anchor institutions. And I know that high schools and schools and local education authorities probably do the same thing to mark ourselves as anchors. It's just not very dynamic, is it, as a term? So there's something, something missing about the dynamism and the innovation, and the creativity in the role. It's, it sounds like we do the same thing from one year to the next. You know, you throw us in the water and we hold the ship just about in place one year. We do the same next year. It doesn't really change over time. And that doesn't feel to me like that at all reflects the dynamism that you find in the school college partnerships. And I sort of came to understanding more about these these partnerships and the relationships between schools and colleges, really more, I think, during COVID than anything else. Because it was a little bit like, you know, it was a little bit like clean running water through the tap. When something stopped, you suddenly noticed it. You know, a huge amount of work that was kind of commonplace that colleges and schools were really good at all across the country changed quite dra dra drastically and suddenly we wanted to look at it and understand it more. And that was about the time when I think from the OECD work and the government were keen to see more understanding of the scale of school college partnership work going around the country, how it was funded, how it was designed. And so all of us, I'm, the agency that I'm involved with, Colleges Scotland, local education authorities, the curriculum and assessment board that reports to the government all started to work together to try and report the scale of school college activity going on in Scotland. And you'll all have seen the reports. The, the reality is flipping massive, loads of it. And it's completely different region by region. It is completely critical to the pathways for learners to progress through the system. Uh, it, it, and it is delivered in all kinds of different ways, completely attuned and relative to the area and the context and the partners involved. So, and that understanding is only growing. So um, Louise is with us, Professor Hayward, fantastic to have you here you know, critical um, the work that she's doing to continue to understand more and more about the role that school college partnerships are playing across the country to the continuing and growing success of our education system. So, um, so it's a really it's fascinating and, and I, I look, you know, Fiona asked me to do this a few months ago. And I kind of had this on, on my wall as a thing that I was looking forward to because because it's such a brilliant session full of brilliant people who want to talk more, full of people who've got Mrs or Miss or Mr at the front of their team's handle, which always makes me feel excited as well. So we're going to have proper educators talking to us. So I've got lots of lots of excitement to come. So we're going to start now. Let's get going. Uh, about 10 or 15 minutes, if it's all right to hear from from Louise and from Sarah, uh, who are going to talk to us about Inverness and, and then, then Academy's partnership. And then, as I say, 
if you want to come in, if you if you hear something as they're speaking that you're going to want to talk about, just raise the hand. You can leave it there and I will come to you when they finish their presentation and we can take questions or discussion uh, after that. So if I can hand over to you guys to, to present and speak to everybody else in 10 or 15 minutes time. Well, thank, thank you very much for having both Louise and myself today. I hope that everybody can hear me OK. Um, has somebody got our presentation or should, should Louise share it on the screen? I'm going to share it, Sarah. I just wanted to say thanks to Jim because actually you're quite right that the whole anchor analogy doesn't really sum up the dynamism that we, we feel that we can perhaps bring to the SEQF partnership. So we're hoping to share some thoughts with you just now, if you bear with me while I, I pull up our presentation. Uh, now perhaps somebody can... Maybe Sarah, you can just let me know that you can see that OK. Yeah, it's there. You just need to shove it onto the first slide. Apologies. There we go. Right, there we go. Perfect. So I'm Deputy Head Teacher at Nairn Academy with curriculum, amongst other things, on my remit. And Nairn have been working with ICUHI for a number of years now. Um, and Louise is our key link, really, at ICUHI. Louise, do you want to shove the next slide up? Yeah, absolutely. So part of the role that we play um, at Inverness really is to work in partnership with over 29 high schools across the Highlands and Islands. So it's quite a huge geographical area, um, which brings its own constraints. I can see some of our partner schools with us this evening. Um, and like Sarah says, we do work really closely together. So we're going to talk through one of the projects that we've been working on uh, and hopefully that will resonate with some of you. So the first thing that we need to talk about is just a wee bit of background to Nairn Academy. We are a small town, about 10,000 outside Inverness, about um, half an hour away. We've got 685 kids roughly and a growing role. We're waiting for our new school, which is going to be built in October 2025. Thank goodness, because the old one's a bit of a state. Um, we have a totally comprehensive catchment, so anything from SIMD 1 to 20, we've got somebody in there. Um, and we have a range of mixed employability and um, the slide here shows um, this is the SDS employability statistics for Nairn and the Highlands and Islands and where the changes are going to be in the next few years. And when we started working with ICUHI, we were doing a curriculum review and we were looking at what did our pupils actually need and were we giving it to them and were we not giving it to them? We've got about a third of our cohort go on to higher education and the rest go on to further education and employability. And there are various key areas and one of them actually quite unexpectedly is social care. Nairn is the retirement capital of Scotland, it seems. But at the moment, well, we didn't have any courses that really represented that. It's still something we're working on. Construction's big, obviously, and rural things as well. And the way that we started was by thinking, well, are we accrediting everything that our kids do? No, we weren't. We were missing some key things, and we're going to talk about those in a minute. And how can we how can we plug those gaps? And actually, the answer wasn't inside the box. The answer was in partnerships and some quite wacky ideas actually coming off in the end, which was fantastic. So I love working with Louise because I can phone her up and say, I've just started doing this. Is there a way that we can perhaps accredit it? And she's never said no to me yet, which is very exciting. So we'll chat a wee bit through the projects that we've got just now. So one of the things we're looking at is trying to make sure that in Nairn Academy, we're not missing a trick and that everything that our pupils do can be accredited and that we're not not accrediting something that could be, particularly in terms of wider achievement. So we have various master classes in S3, but at one point we weren't accrediting things in S6 where the kids do making a difference activities or mad activities where they give back to the school. And also about making sure that we have enough breadth in our curriculum, looking at employability, life skills and things in the community. And that was really the start of the three different projects that we had. And if we look at the next slide, I think there's a summary of the three of them. So we have SCQF level three, which is learning a new skill, which we use to accredit people master classes in S3. C to sale in S5 was through a specific partnership with Farmer Jones Academy, where they came in having written some materials that weren't actually accredited. And then we worked with ICUHI to accredit the qualification and come up with something called from seed to sale at level five. 
and also a level five community project. And that's something we use with all our S6 pupils, the entire cohort and a number of others lower down the school um, through alternative curriculum. So one of our jobs, like Sarah says, she she often rings me and says, here's, here's a big list of all the things that we'd like to do. Uh, and our job is to really look at identifying where that sits within the SEQF framework, um, what can be accredited and how we can make that work between us. Um, the school are always best placed to identify the needs of the young people who are there. They know them the best. And so it's really, as Sarah said, identifying that need and looking at those opportunities for accreditation, usually with wider achievement opportunities. Uh, the way that we, the role that we play, I suppose, is to take the idea and to uh, have a look at how it fits within the SEQF framework, to look at the unit descriptors uh, and to make sure um, that the specification is written properly. And some of the difficulties that we've had are in the language that's quite new to some of the staff in the school. So we did quite a few training sessions to discuss the level descriptors and make sure that the right terminology was used for the right levels. Uh, we helped the school to write their outcomes. And then the next step is to go through our internal quality assurance process. And that that takes quite a rigorous format. So the way um, the way that we do that within uh, UHI Inverness is to make sure that we get a diverse range of individuals. So that can be heads of uh, different curriculum areas, different curriculum managers from areas that are not related to the qualification, uh, members of our quality team, lecturers from different disciplines and different members of professional service teams that can look at us and act as a critical friend. So they'll have time to read um, the course specification to digest it, to have a look at how that meets um, the outcomes as laid out in the SEQF framework and, and the kind of guidance there, pick any holes in it if there are any, make sure we haven't missed anything, make sure that all meets up. Um, at that point, it'll either be approved or we'll go back and make recommendations for tweaks to be made so that that all conforms. Now, the way that we deliver that is that the school team will do the teaching and the uh, internal assurance, quality assurance process. And then we will sample the work that's produced and make sure we do the external verification process uh, and, and second mark that and make sure that that is all um, to standard. So the difficulty that Sarah has is putting all of that into the timetabling. So I'll let her explain how that works. Well, those of you out there who are school timetablers, you'll share my pain. Um, it's never easy. Every year it gets harder. It's like Jenga blocks on some kind of massive, horrendous six dimensional level. We use the SEQF framework against all of our course choices rather than just higher and nationals because it incorporates things like foundation apprenticeships and skills for work classes. And that helps make things a bit more transparent to start with for both parents and pupils. I made, unfortunately for the kids and parents, a 20 minute Loom video explaining the course choice process last year that they're all subjected to, started using it in COVID and I've just kept going. And that talks them through the different qualifications and what the difference is between things like a higher or an SEQF qualification and a national five. And so the, the language becomes a wee bit more basic for them and a bit easier to understand. And we do talk a wee bit about tariff points and um, how the the universities use them uh, and what they mean and um, that's a key part of it really actually we have a huge career and learner pathway event every year with 80 employers coming in we're starting it again this year 15th of february if anyone's interested in coming we'd love to have you and we've managed to timetable into the timetable these specific qualifications so for example the s6 have two periods a week of wider achievement where all of them undertake not only the SQA Work Placement Award at Level 6, but also the SEQF Community Project Award at Level 5. So that's the entire cohort do that. There's about 50 this year, plus various pupils lower down, um, and that goes into one of their, their core columns. Some of the other courses go into actual column choices, so we use the Seed to Sale as an actual column choice in for the S3s uh, and 4s. And it just really depends, but I'm absolutely happy to take questions on how that fits into a timetable. You basically have to MacGyver everything with a paperclip as per usual. Um, and we use that time with the S6s and the various timetable times to make sure that we are chatting to kids, making sure the various bits of teaching are in. And we obviously hit assessment deadlines 
with the college to make sure that we're able to complete the assessment and verification on time. Next slide, please. So there's a wee bit here about the outcomes of the project. So we wrote three projects, as Louise was saying, and the process from a school point of view was there was a lot of support from ICUHI. We sat and we wrote the actual all the language together and I would go and sit and work at the college for half a day at a time during the writing process. I'm not going to say the panel process was pleasant. It was certainly rigorous and robust, but by the end of it, you'd felt like you'd really understood why it was something was accepted or not accepted, which was really useful. So the learning a new skill, it was at level three. That was 10 C SEQF points. And here's a picture of some of our S3 kids a couple of years ago going into a primary class to teach them a wee bit of Mandarin. And that was their skill was learning Mandarin. And this was one of the projects that they managed to um, get accredited at the end of it, which was absolutely lovely. The next one, I think, is another learning new skill. So some of our kids learned how to graft fruit trees and then how to plant trees. And we now have a school orchard with 36 fruit trees grafted with the help of the local Green Hive organisation. And I think probably the largest school orchard in Highland, which is very exciting. And they have now started fruiting, which is even more exciting because it means we can press the apples and we have a lot of apple pie at certain times of year. And that ties into the next one, which is the seed to sale. That's at, oh, can we flip past that one? Sorry, Louise, they were just, the photos were too nice. I made Louise put them in. Um, now the seed to sale is where the pupils take uh, a raw product and they have to devise a product for marketing. And this was developed for, through the Farmer Jones Academy and Farmer Jones Academy or Training for You, as it's now known. This was their materials that were accredited. And you can see some of our kids here taking part in a business launch of their product, Speedy Beans. Um, it was basically a hot snack of a bean, not just baked beans, obviously, but something with some of our things that we've grown in the garden. In this case, some herbs and various spices and things that they've grown. But the idea would be is that the kids would grow things in the polytunnel and outside in the, the garden that we have. And then they would devise their own product and do the marketing for it and learn about marketing strategy and finance and um, presenting to other businesses. And we actually had a lot of businesses come along to the pitch of Speedy Beans, which was great because the pupils got genuine feedback from industry. And the last one is the community project. I'll flip past that one too, here we go. So the community project award covers a myriad of things. It's anything whatsoever that does something to help the school or local community. And we needed the qualification to be as wide as possible to incorporate a range of things. We might have an S6 people who wanted to help with the gardening or who wanted to go and support library staff or who was taking part in a street dance project with younger pupils outside school or volunteered at an old folks home. Whatever it is, we wanted to be able to accredit it. So that's why we called it community project and why the aims are actually quite general and allows pupils to have a real degree of choice. We've got 50 S6s and 10 to 15 pupils in S3, 4 and 5 doing that qualification just this year, which is very exciting. And we've got a couple of examples on the next slide. Um, so this is Callum's project. He is an ambassador for Mikey's Line. And as part of what he's doing, he has made a notice board and he links with the charity and the school. And he also ran the little store that you saw in the last slide at our summer fair, which was really good. Um, and Mikey's Line is a charity dear to the hearts of our school because they've supported many of our pupils through fairly sad times. Um, so it's a very important one. And the other example we've got is Joe. This is Joe, who is a total superstar. Joe volunteered after COVID to help his local cricket team out. And part of the qualification is to think about your values and how your values can grow um, through doing your project. So it makes you look inwards as well as outwards. And the bit I love most is that Joe says, nobody asked me to start up junior training. I did it because I saw something had to be done and I acted. And that really sums up Joe in the essence of the qualification. It's about kids seeing something that needs done and going and making a difference. That's another example there. And what's lovely is that Louise and I get to meet and chat about all the different projects, which is fab. The Heat and Treat project is the brainchild of a group of pupils who work with our PEF skills tutor, Jackie. And they were very worried about um, the austerity cuts and they decided that they wanted pensioners to have heat 
and a treat. So they have um, made bags of kindling um, in the workshop and through donations of local companies and they are delivering a bag of kindling or a hot water bottle if you don't have an open fire and a treat of some kind. Um, Nairn is full of bakers. We are very cake and biscuit oriented as a school and we have got our own cookbook if anyone's interested and they are going to be delivering bags of kindling, hot water bottles, fluffy socks and hand knitted gloves which some of the kids are making along with bags of cake to local pensioners and to folk who could do with it. So that's the heat and treat project which has actually involved quite a few pupils and we're also managing to assess bits of literacy and numeracy through that as well. And our next steps are, well, we're never short of looking for opportunities to work between us. And um, we've got various things going on at the moment, um, but we're going to be accrediting our pupils to take part in a construction course to build our new school. And as I mean, poor Louise, she has to face me on almost a weekly basis asking her if I can accredit something. And we're looking at other various local industries and how we can forge more links. So we're happy to take any questions. I will stop sharing because I can't see anyone but Sarah just now, which is fine, but I'd like to see other people. Um, so if you do have any questions, you know, just let us know and hopefully we can answer those for you. Hopefully that's given you a bit of a flavour of some of the uh, innovative ideas that Sarah comes up with. And I have to say they are Sarah's brainchild. They will just have these interesting conversations about what she's come up with next. And, and, and it, it really does vary quite greatly depending on the needs of the young people, but it really does help to capture some of the fantastic ideas that they have uh, and helps them be recognised really for the hard work that they undertake that perhaps isn't captured under uh, other awards that are offered. So let you uh, jump in if you've got any queries. Well, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you both of you. I mean, it's me again. And uh, I'm just, I'm, you know, while people are thinking of their questions, remember reactions, hand raise, we're quite a large group and then you can come on in. But I mean, uh, well, there's an awful lot there, wasn't there? It? Amazing how you get into the, the actual details of the project. You just get so excited. It's impossible not to. I mean, I think Joan did, deserves a peerage if he's able to get young, young, young boys now and young girls to play cricket. I've, I've tried this. It's very difficult. He's, he's a star. I know, Joe. But there's, there's so much, there's so much excitement there in the actual content people want to talk about. But one, one question I wanted to ask you was that you both referenced the number of times how easily and freely your relationship flows and how you work together and just from the perspectives that you come from what makes your relationship with the other one make it work what you know what, what is it for Sarah about working with Louise that makes the partnership successful for you and then vice versa with Louise so what are we, what would we, we should, what, what would be the sort of best practice about that that actual human relationship that makes the two institutions work together so well I think we keep the kids at the heart of everything that we do and also we both talk a lot <laughs> And we're very true. solution oriented, so there's always a fix for something. And whenever possible, we like to meet face to face. So we'll go into I'll go into UHI and we'll have a cup of tea or Louise will come to the school and we'll have cake and we'll wander around and we'll chat. And normally as we're chatting, we'll come up with another myriad of ideas. And poor Lindsay, who's Louise's boss, has to keep calming us down. But I think I think that's the key, really, I'd say um, for us, it's about just that passion that we have that young people should be recognized for all that you know the fabulous work that they do and just to keep an eye on that what can work for the pupils I think that's like Sarah said it that's at the heart of everything that we do it's it's them that we focus on so if there is a need there then we do everything we can to see if we can meet that need uh I don't know I might have to say no to Sarah at some point, but I don't think it's happened just yet uh. because it is about that learner need. It's about, it, you know, if there is a need within the school and we can help facilitate that and make that a reality, then I can't see a good reason to say no, unfortunately. So it's it's still a yes from us until until that becomes the case. Fantastic. Well, thank you both. I, I did notice that at one place you get a cup of tea, the other get you place you get tea and cake so we'll have to work on that maybe think about that as a sector issue Louise but uh, I've got <laughs> no I, I, that, that sort of shines through the, the, the learn attentiveness that you started on your first slide with trying to understand where where the skills opportunities are where, the, where students will want to and need to move in the economy and then you, you take it from there I think that's a really good place to have started so thank you for that response but I've got Miss McMillan wants to come in Miss McMillan, you're on mute currently but if you demute you, the, the floor is yours 
Hi there, Lauren Millen from Belmont Academy, South Asia here. Um, thank you very much for sharing all of that. It's it's really nice to hear a, a true community spirit and that kind of connection to the community that you're working in. So thank you for sharing that. Um, one question I'd like to ask, we are a school of 1200, 1250. And obviously with that, it can sound absolutely fantastic. And to make sure the quality is there, do you have a lead teacher or curriculum link for each of these projects going forward or is it all kind of managed at a kind of SLT level? Um, I am the lead teacher, I teach them um, but some of the others are passed on to other members of staff but I was the link for these ones but we've got various other ones um, where other folk are the lead teachers and I will be happily passing the baton on when this current S6 leave and the next the deputy who's currently got the S5s will take over as being their link. So it, it really depends on the qualification, I think. I certainly won't be the link for the construction skills one. That's not my best suit. <laughs> so I think it just depends. And as deputy for curriculum, I tend to help other staff develop things and put them in touch with Louise when I need to. And it doesn't have to be me as the deputy link who does that stuff. I kind of facilitate it, if that makes sense. Thank you, that's great. Excellent. Anybody else would like to come in, ask a question? Oh, well, you've, you've floored the great. Oh, no, look, Louise wants to come in. Louise, over to you. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed that. It was absolutely fascinating and what a wonderful um, array of things going on. I, I was just wondering, are there experiences that you think every young person should have? or are they bespoke to particular groups of, of young people? A big question, isn't it? Um, we did have the entire S3 cohort doing the um, the master classes, but it had yeah, yeah. a myriad of different master classes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not absolutely sure what you're asking. If you're asking me as an educator, do I believe that every single young person should get the chance to go away to, into the outdoors during their secondary school career? The answer is yes. Um, <laughs> but the the SEQF things that it's every kid who is an S6 at the minute we're targeting for the community project. But I do think that these um, the SEQF allows you to develop, I think, and recognize different strands in a young person's learning. And I think sometimes it can be, as schools, I think we can be very narrowly targeted sometimes towards university entrance. And that I think is a, is a negative. There's a real emphasis still on getting your hires. And I, I'm not convinced that that's actually that helpful sometimes. And I think these wider qualifications, we are making every one of our S6 do these because we think it's really important. And every one of them who stays on does commit to having a role in the school and community. So we, we, we're going to accredit it, the same as the work experience. I do think that there is a bit of a, as I said, an issue, a challenge perhaps, that sometimes it feels not the, not further education, not, not ICUHI, but some of the universities, if you're looking at some of the more traditional um, degrees, I suppose, they still want to see the hires. And so, for example, we've got a pupil at the minute um, who wants to do law, but who wants to do a foundation apprenticeship. And that's a real issue because a university won't necessarily recognise that foundation apprenticeship, but they'll recognise an A grade and a hire. And I think that that is a real issue because I think that we should be looking at the value of what our young people do and maybe recognizing the value of what they do should be the universal thing rather than trying to funnel them all down the same the same tube as it were that's really helpful thank you very much fantastic any other country that was great sarah i wish i'd been writing that down i think someone's recording i'd like a transcript of sarah's last answer that i'm going to put on my wall um because it was a pretty pithy uh sense of where i think a lot of us are on on what the system should be producing that was brilliant any other questions or comments or contributions? No, OK, well, in that case, on all our behalf, thank you, Sarah and Louise. That was fantastic. Really, really good. And thank you for taking the time to, to put the slides together for us all too and enjoy those. Um, that was re really good. great. Thank you. So thank you for having us. Thank you very much. We're going to move hundreds of miles southwest. I think my geography is, is about right now. Um, 
and we're going to hear from from Phil and from Kate from Dumfries and Galloway College and Alison from Dalbeesie High School about their partnership around the Foundation Apprenticeship Programme. So same again. So there's going to be about sort of 10 minutes, I think, and the presentation will be available to go on screen. Um, and then again, if you've got questions percolating, just raise the hand and we'll come to you after the contribution and have more of a discussion and a QA. and a So uh, if I hand over to you guys, thanks very much for joining us. See you on screen, Phil. So I'm going to hand over to you because I can see you most. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks. I think I'll bring uh, Alison in, who's going to lead with the presentation. So she'll cover a wee bit uh, around uh, the BT High, and then I'll come in towards the end around uh, our, our role as, as the college and that. Thanks, Phil. Uh, I'm Alison Houston. I'm principal teacher of developing young workforce at the BT High School, and uh, we're a relatively small secondary school. We've got about 360 pupils, and over the years, our teaching staff has been culled. We're currently sitting at around 30 full-time members of staff at the moment. And up until about five, six years ago, we were a pretty traditional curriculum with National Fours, National Five, Hires, Advanced Hires. And then we started to develop this partnership with Dumfries and Galway College, which we think has been pretty good. Um, we've got a lot of kids who are achieving a lot of qualifications, which if they had st stuck in Dalbeti High School and just followed those no National Fours, National Fives, Hires, they might not have achieved. So I'll just pass over to Phil just to give you a wee bit of information about Dumfries and Galloway College and how it kind of compares to Dalbeti High School. Thanks, uh, Alison. So my name is Phil Storier. I'm Director of Student Experience and Academic Performance at Dumfries and Galloway College. Um, again, we are the largest uh, education provider of, of um, tertiary education in the south, uh, southwest of Scotland. Um, and I think it's probably fair to say that that we are on uh, a bit of a journey and particularly uh, on that sort of same path as Dalbiti, which is why I think particularly our two institutions uh, are working well together. Probably within that same time frame, our own curriculum was, was fairly traditional. Um, it, it hadn't changed a lot and that included our kind of full time curriculum and also our senior phase offer very much rooted in traditional uh, curriculum areas. Um, we have, you know, in the last number of years, uh, made attempts to try and shift that. I've only been at the college for two years, but what I would say is that um, the pandemic has really, really shifted that in terms of uh, our thinking and the, the way we move on that. So we had started some work around really working closely with Dalbiti and other schools to really start to tailor the offer and really bread it. Uh, open out the breadth of, of the qualifications and options available um, for, for young people across the region. Um, particular challenges that we have around that as well, linked to how do we provide that breadth of offer, but also the challenges we've got around our rurality, our, our, di our distance between schools. Um, and so now in the last couple of years, it's, it's looking at not just the breadth of the offer, but also in terms of how we're going to be able to deliver that offer in terms of making sure that we give young people those embedded um, career opportunities, developing those broader skills, um, but still trying to face the challenges we face uh, rurally. I think that the final point I would make before passing back is one thing that we have seen in the last couple of years, specifically around Dalbiti, is the strength of how they promote that offer, which Alison's about to go through and show you how they how they drive that with their young people. And what we really see in terms of the strength of the promotion within the school is that the opportunities are, are really, really increasing. Um, and the, the importance that colleges put in terms of that SCQF framework and all that that offers young people is really, really strong at WBT. And so therefore, I think we really work because there's a there's a there's a mutual respect there. And as a college, we feel the respect that WBT places on on the full uh, framework. Uh, and just as a wee, a wee figure in the last year, this year alone, we've seen a further increase in our uh, applications and enrolments into our senior phase program of 53% on, on the last uh, year, which is massive in terms of how that offer is starting to really appeal to young people across the region. I'll pass back to Alison just now. So I suppose this all really starts with our options process. Sorry, my presentation is not playing ball. Oh, here we go, here we go. Uh, so it all starts with our, our options process, and this is just a wee sort of diagram showing that our, pro our options. So um, our form set up to 
make sure that all pupils are expected to have achieved a level five numeracy and literacy before they leave they'll be to high school whether that's a s4 five or six level um in s4 our pupils can study up to seven national qualifications and they're delivered four periods a week likely two doubles which works in quite nicely with how it fits into the college academy program they'll obviously all get their core provision of pe pac rme and ps and then we've got this wonderful opportunity for the vocational and college study. So these college sessions run every Tuesday morning from half nine to half twelve and then on a Thursday from half one till half four. So it is slight extension to the school day if they are in an afternoon session. And if pupils choose the foundation apprenticeship or the HNC qualifications, then they have to attend both um, the Tuesday morning and the Thursday afternoon sessions. For the remainder of the College Academy courses, they only have to attend one day. But what we've managed to do is slot it in so that pupils can actually attend two College Academy courses. So we've got a group of kids who go to um, Dumfries on a Tuesday morning to do construction. And then on a Thursday afternoon, college uh, lecturer comes into school and does the Skills for Work Automotive with with a good group of 12, I think it's about 12 kids who really enjoy that practical hands-on because we're very lucky. We are a new build and we have got an automotive workshop complete with lift and, and all the, the gadgets that go with it that are beyond me. Um, I go and chap on the door and ask them to fill my tyres with air sometimes or, <laughs> or give it a wee wash, but that's, that's the limit of my extent, the knowledge. We've managed to set up transport to and from Dumfries and Galway College because we are about 20 minutes, half an hour away, depending on traffic. So we've got a bus which comes, picks up the kids on a Tuesday morning, takes them down to Dumfries, waits for them, picks them back up, brings them back down, and then on a Thursday they get taken down and they use their Young Scott cards to get back after after their session is finished. Um, when it comes to the actual options process, uh, we support our kids with their application to the college and we want to find out why they want to apply to the college and um, we sit down with them we have a good good discussion we talk about foundation apprenticeships what what's that going to bring to you the table for you how are you going to to use that we we understand that some some of our kids are not suited to sitting down in a hall sitting an exam for two hours and we we have that really in-depth discussion with them before they apply to the college and then we make sure that they understand what that college course is is actually going to entail because for some of them they think oh yeah just get to go to the college it's a wee skive but when we drill down look at what they need to have in it qualification wise moving forward it really makes them think about is this appropriate for me and you can see with our options form We've broken it down. I think Sam was saying the same that we've broken it. They've broken it down up at Nairn with the different levels. So it's right across the board there. We've got levels SEQF level four up to level seven. It's broken down into each of the columns, and then we have these wider opportunity options down in the the right hand side there as you're looking at the screen. We've got some committees um, where pupils can give things back to the school, and it's interesting to hear what Sarah was saying that maybe we could get some accreditation put in there with our community maybe social and events and then we've got our short courses which are all accredited and they are one piece a week where they get opportunity to take part in young enterprise personal finance a mental health award um, leadership and prince's trust um, options so these are all the courses which our pupils have access to at the Fries and Galway college um, we've got our foundation apprenticeships food and drink technologies which unfortunately we're kind of struggling to get pupils to, to sign up for but I think trying to be a bit proactive I'm a home economics teacher and I think what we need to do as an authority is sit down and really look at food science and try and encourage our pupils or, or our staff to drill it down it's not just about practical practical cookery skills it's about the other bits that go to it because we do have quite a number of food manufacturers in Dumfries and Galway so it's something where we think we need to work at to try and bump those numbers up because it is a really, really worthwhile course. We've got creative and digital media. We've got engineering, which is a two year course, and that's for S5s only. And that has been a really, really popular choice for elite high school pupils. They all really buy into it. I don't think we've sent anybody who 
has kind of went, nah, this course isn't for me. And then we've got social services and young people where we've had a lot of our um, young people coming back and going into the primary school because we're a, a joint campus with Dalbeethie Primary and they've been able to come back and do a wee bit of work experience in the nursery there and or leaving the primary school. And there you can see we've got the different faculty areas, business and computing, creative industries, construction, built environment, early education and childcare, engineering, hair and beauty, and social care and um, hospitality. And it's from levels four right up to level seven, SCQF level seven. So there's something there for everybody. And it, I think we're quite unique in the fact that we encourage them to take two subjects and they get support when they're back in school if they're not sure. And the college is really, really good at feeding back to us if there are any issues with submission of coursework, if there is anybody who's struggling a wee bit, there's a, a constant dialogue going on there. And our student support team within the school are very good at getting that young person in and having that discussion with them to say, look, what's going on here? Why is this not working for you? What can we do to help and support? So I think we have had pretty, pretty decent um numbers of pupils who have started the courses, courses and completed them fully each year that we have run it. So obviously you all know about the progression pathways going on from levels three to seven and how you can then kind of branch off into your foundation apprenticeship, your MPAs and your skills for work, work experience volunteering. For some of our parents they kind of struggled and for pupils as well when it came to options time they struggle to kind of understand how does that work for me if I'm interested in sport, a career in sport, for example, how can I, how does this work for me if I'm interested in engineering? So what we came up with is we've come up with this poster, which maybe isn't that clear for you, but we have subjects which are offered within WT High School and the broad general education sort of umbrella, levels four up to seven. So these are subjects which they can take in school. And then we've got our school college partnership where they can go and they can see what course they could do as part of that Tuesday morning, Thursday afternoon. And then how does that lead on to potential full time courses, modern apprenticeships, university? So it's all there. And to make it easier, we hyperlinked the skills, the college academy courses. So it was just one click. Parents could just click on it and they could see Right, what does this course actually involve? How easy is it for my child to, to get to the college? What's the expectation? What's the assessment? How does this all, all work? And feedback from parents and from pupils was actually this this makes it as a sort of progression in that particular pathway, which I've got a genuine interest in. And it makes helps them to make a more informed choice about whether they are suited to that particular area, career. And putting it into that workplace context, how you can go on and do modern apprenticeships, how you can look at um, not just going a linear straight across this boom, 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 level four or national four, national five, higher and so on. It is more, a, well, you could actually come down here and you could do a wee bit of professional cookery and then that can lead on to go in into a full time course. And that has helped our pupils. So we've done that for the courses um, which are on offer. It's part of College Academy and Foundation Apprenticeships. So that has then led us to look at our curriculum within the school, which we offer. So we've got sports leadership, which we run with the support of um, Active Schools and Community Sport. We're, I'm quite good at getting former pupils to come back into the school. Pupils that, well, former pupils who are a well-kent face that can relate to the kids. So we've got Amy, who's um, working with Active Schools and Community Sport. She supports uh, sports leadership at levels five and six. We have good links with Jazz P. Wilson, a local forestry business. They are a great supporter of the school. Um, they come in and do a wee bit around business and IT, their part of engineering um, and travel and tourism. We're just starting to look at how we can involve another form of pupil who's got a hotel, but also linking into we have a, a pop up restaurant within the school, which um, some of our junior pupils run. And the next stage there, we'll be seeing how we can get that accredited for them. And then I'll leave, pass you over to Phil. 
Uh, thanks, Alison. I'm conscious of time here, Jim, so I'll try and be nice and, nice and quick on this. Um, so I think in terms of, uh, of our position of the college, I mean, I suppose to work directly with a school like Dalbiti for us is a dream because you can see the work that they're doing in terms of promoting the SCQF framework, which is exactly what we are there to, to really support delivering on. You know, I said that we are, we are on a bit of a journey in terms of transitioning and we're kind of, I suppose, doing that in partnership, both made a recognition of, you know, traditional curriculum, you know, in a school, but also for us as a college. So we're really now moving towards developing a suite of personalised education, training and skills, which is going to meet the needs of our young people. So when you look at the foundation apprenticeships, the, 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 the areas that the young people can choose, are there because that's what we are identifying as demand within the region, particularly in a region where we have, you know, a group of young people who will leave the region to, to further education, but we have to ensure that there are people um, who stay in the south of Scotland and, and develop those communities and have the right skill, skill sets, particularly identifying a need for young people and for the population at large in the south of Scotland to develop more qualifications at level seven and above. And, and really we have to make sure the pathways are there for that and, and that more seamless journey so the more that we can build into senior phase provision um, the better it is uh, for the region and for, for people so it's about creating those innovative pathways but what we are about is about raising aspirations I think what we're trying to do with Dalbiti and with other local schools is to try and understand what are the regional demands what the skills needs but also what are aspirations of young people and they don't always align and it's making sure that we, we're providing the right offer and using the framework uh, to make sure that we can we can find different ways of doing that um, and, and working closely with our, our school partners is is key, I suppose. Some of the wider things that we've done to help um, uh, kind of co-promote uh, the, the offer there um, is we've got the Choose College campaign and that's still a big piece that we're trying to do locally and regionally. But Dalbiti, is a, we, we see them as a real uh, trailblazer of that in the region in terms of the work they do to promote college as, as a as an equal choice, uh, not a first choice, not a set, but an equal choice in terms of education. We've done a lot of work with schools in terms of providing sector and taster days into those careers. And um, we are now going directly back into schools and, and providing. So we've sending staff into the LBT to actually sit with young people and support them to make those choices. Through the pandemic, we tried a number of uh, kind of online events and things. And, and, and to be honest, the reality is we've gone going back to an old school approach there of actually sending our staff in, showing that real partnership approach and supporting young people as they're making those choices so that we can sell the advantages of a foundation apprenticeship and the other qualifications that we offer. We've done a combination of things, so we'll meet with, you know, staff and um, particularly senior leaders from Dalbiti individually. Uh, we try and go in once a year and look at that curriculum offer. We meet very regularly with all the senior phase uh, schools uh, across the region to discuss curriculum, and we're starting to do some more co-design co events and activities. So last summer we had Education Scotland down, and we did a code a co-design curriculum session uh, between all our local authority schools and the college and that threw out uh, a number of new ideas and new thinking around how we can uh, continue to broaden the offer. Uh, Alison, if you can move to the next slide, the last slide. Thank you. So the, the, the premise was around the, the foundation apprenticeships and this year uh, Alison has highlighted some of the challenges. So we've seen, for example, uh, hospitality is a key uh, sector for us in the region. But unfortunately, the, the foundation apprenticeship just isn't getting that uptake. But we continue to look at that and think, well, how do we match again? It's that aspiration versus what's the demands of the region. Um, but for example, as social services, children and young people, uh, FA, big demand in the region, you know, almost a bit of an employment crisis. And that is something that uh, we're pleased to see, you know, uh, working well. But our engineering programme is working really well. Two year programme, students coming in two days. And that's given us a real good model. And I think that's a classic example of where we are raising aspirations for young people and providing um, really good opportunities. Other pieces of work that we're looking to do um, specifically is, is using the flexibility of the framework now to offer more specifically designed programmes. So we do see engineering, but what we noticed was that within the senior phase, and uh, particularly with our offer, perhaps, you know, the access level and how do we introduce uh, re, uh, engineering, particularly for us as a college around green and renewable and sustainability programmes. So we've written a renewable energy practical skills at SCQF level four. 
part of that is just building that pathway so we can work with LBT to then encourage young people earlier into these programmes, potentially then transition into FAs. And and, and particularly, uh, you know, I'll not, I'll not uh, deny that our focus is about attracting people into, young people into engineering who may have never understood what engineering was or perhaps don't have those influencers around them away from school who are, who are pushing them towards those careers. And the other piece that we're trying to do now moving forward is, is more targeted pieces of provision. So the work that we do with LBT um, and with the local authority, it, it, it points us as a college to gaps in terms of you know smaller chunks and nuggets of learning that we can also support to, to build into that uh, framework for, for young people. So we've developed a number of, of new qualifications, journey to employment at SCQF level four. We're currently uh, credit rating the, the fuel change challenge at SCQF level six, and we've done things around mental health and wellbeing. So again, these are smaller chunks of learning that through conversations with Alison that we'll throw into the offer and say, does that that meet and on the flip side uh, it's always important for us that we do an annual review around is the offer right so before we launch and co-design that offer that Alison was promoting that they'll promote in the school we we sense check that with the school to make sure that um, it, it's it's got the right the, the right provision on it we're meeting the needs of young people at Dalbiti and where there are gaps that we we open up the doors and say well let's look at how we can we can plug that gap so that that finishes it from me uh, and I think I'll pass back to Jim at that point. Brilliant. Well, thank you both of you for that fantastic presentation. We've got a few minutes for, for questions, discussions. There was an awful lot in that. There was, a, I'm going to, whilst other people are, are sort of composing their thoughts and, and raising their hand, one thought for me was just a question about, but you both mentioned influencers, parents, carers, allies, supporters of students making decisions. Alison, perhaps to you, you know, is your sense that over the, over time, as you introduce that framework, that more complex, not more complex, but it requires more more creative thought about supporting your learner, your student, your child, or the person you're caring for through the system, uh, it requires a bit more engagement in, in a kind of new set of ideas, new set of courses. Is your sense that parents and allies and supporters and carers are more alert, more open to that now? Is that is that is that, is that thawing? Or, you know, is that starting to change over time? And, and what what's the sort of best practice you're finding in making sure that that that's happening? I think I think parents, carers, local employers, they're all starting to understand a wee bit better. And it, it is like we've got our SCQF ambassadors in school who are at every event that happens, parents' evenings. They are hammering home. We've got posters up all around the school. We're speaking to parents and saying, do you understand? How can we make this more user friendly? Which is how we ended up looking at that because at, we have a big curriculum options choice change day event in February where that's here's the options form and um, parents come in we have that big launch and we speak to them and they go well what if, if they take that this year can they take that next year Do, how's it all going to link on so after that discussion we said right how can we make this this better how can we make it more understandable for for somebody who still thinks in the old grade standard grade sort of uh, frame of mind and feedback has been pretty good now we're just thinking how how can we change this how can we update it and i think we might go down the, the route of tiktoks and social media and and things like that because for a lot of our parents i'm now at that stage where i've taught their parents and i'm like oh I'm so old but you know it is that is the future isn't it and it is how can we make this easier to understand but it, it definitely is easier than it was five years ago when you're when you're talking about you could you could be looking at this as a an option. You could be looking at that as an option. You know, foundation apprenticeships, and they go, mm, "Well, I don't know about that." But when you you explain it to them, it, it is better. Brilliant, thanks. So that's encouraging. As as a as an S one and P four parent, I'm very encouraged by that trajectory of change. I'm looking forward to getting engaged in it myself. But Phil, Phil, one for you, perhaps, because you mentioned that you're you are on a trajectory as a college and a school working together. So how new is the relationship and, and the college academy? How, you know, how recently was it introduced? And, and is this is this is this a kind of relationship, a college academy approach you're developing with lots more schools in the area as well? Just talk us through the kind of trajectory of the college's role. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm limited, Jim, in that I've I've only been here for two years. But uh, yeah, the College Academy offer has been there for a number of years. It has been in place. But what we've seen is it's open, at, you know, across the whole region. So it's open to all schools. But what we have seen is a real differing 
uh, level of engagement uh, in terms of the offer that's there. But most importantly, we can do the curriculum design piece and we can identify the provision. If what we see working really well at the BT is, is exactly as Alison has highlighted, that she really supports us in promoting what we can offer as a college and what that, that framework looks. And, and now we're starting to see a shift in that. So actually, to be honest, in the last couple of years since I've come in, the number of young people enrolling across that wider college college academy program has been dwindling until this year where we've seen you know a 50 percent increase on our, our enrollments from last year and i think that that is a combination of things i think we had the pandemic year but actually that was slowly broadening that offer um, and working in partnership around the promotion using the common language around the scqf framework and making sure that we're aligned in terms of when we talk about levels and qualifications that's really important and then for us that strategic piece around for it for an influence that will come into college to do that if what does that mean so um i think there's there's different levels of uptake but we as i say we do a bit of everything so we meet individually with the schools to try and understand what their need is with all schools um and then we do regularly four or five times a year we have uh, strategic meetings with all our uh, local authority schools and that's kind of coordinated uh, centrally um, that's harder to, to, to understand. So there's kind of pockets of different things going on, but I would say where we're really flying just now is with the OBT. And that, that shows itself in the numbers. I, I do the reporting around performance and what we see from the OBT is, is really good numbers of enrollment and probably some of the highest numbers of success in terms of outcomes for students on College Academy. And I think that mirrors, you know, that kind of partnership approach. So it's, the learning teaching but actually what where, where i think this is strong is the partnership approach to design and promote and share the offer to ensure that we're encouraging and you know engaging young people to make those choices and feel comfortable and safe to make them brilliant thanks for that phil so colleagues any other questions or or, or comments you wanted to make please just raise your hand or or unmute and speak whichever you prefer oh okay well, you seem to have satisfied the audience, both of you. That was a brilliant presentation, very comprehensive and uh, and sparked a lot. I, there's a whole other session to be run on that, that food and drink uh, tech FA. Uh, that's, you know, the, uh, why that one's where it is. And I, we, we could spend hours talking about that because I'm really interested in that. Uh, and also the positive news about the, the social care and child care course, which is brilliant to hear. So, but for now, from, from me, thank you both of you for that presentation. Thank you for both of our presentations which have been brilliant and have, have sparked lots of thoughts and sure lots of connections there'll be lots of going on in the chat people emailing you to ask for thoughts as well i'm sure i've got some bad news which is that ollie bray from education in scotland sadly his the tech has defeated him and he hasn't been able to join us to make a contribution so i haven't got an ollie but i think i have got a donny uh, to take his place and give us some donny i'm going to hand over to you to give us some thoughts on what on next steps your final thoughts on how the sessions have gone reflections uh, and then Fiona will join you too to sort of wrap the session up. But thanks to everyone who's watched so attentively, taken lots of notes. I can see people taking notes all over the place and also has posed questions. So thank you from me. And I'll hand over to Donnie now. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, yeah, definitely can't compete with Ollie, but um, I can I can try and sum up a couple of things that I spotted. It's just really about providing relevant and engaging opportunities for young people and uh, the schools and the colleges that I spoke today are really are delivering on that. Uh, and the partnerships they've, they're forming is, is on such a personal level as well. I think that makes that's everything more special. Um, so that collaboration between the two groups, uh, the, you know, is really fantastic and hopefully something that other schools and other colleges can can learn from and pick up. But I suppose um, the thing that I can really picked up was from the from Sarah and Alison we were talking about levels of qualifications rather than specific titles of qualifications and that's that's what really gets me is that how can you how can you help young people progress through scqf levels if you know through a range of different opportunities and qualifications and develop their whole range of skills um, so i love the pad the, the pathways allison that was great and um i've been trying to collate as lots of copies of that on our padlet and i'll pop the link of that into into the chat as well so you can have a look and find out more information but I suppose it just uh, gets me to the end and just to thank uh, Phil and Alison and Louise and Sarah for the contributions. It's been really, really valuable and I'm sure everyone's picked up a lot of information uh, and special thanks to you, Jim, for chairing for, for his second year running uh, and keeping us on track with timing. Absolutely perfect as always. 
But uh, yes, keen to support and Fiona's put information in the chat. So uh, if you've got any uh, questions about SEQF or looking for any support from us, just drop us an email and we'd, we're always uh, keen to support with anything that's happening. But thank you all for coming and uh, look forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks, Donny. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Thank you.